Good morning, everybody. This is Tom Darling from Maker Logic, and here we are. We are at my uncle and aunt's house in Texas, and we are getting ready to get this bathroom torn apart and remodeled. So as you can see before, this is the vanity that I built back at home, and we got it all out here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and gut this place, and we're going to turn it into something really, really cool. As you can see through this, these photos here, it's a small... Oh gosh, about like eight by nine, eight by ten um, bathroom in a house that's like forty years old, I think, or fifty years old. I can't remember exactly how old it is. We're gonna pull everything out, take it down to the studs and drywall, and then we're gonna redo it, and then we're gonna take you along the way with us. So stick around. <laughs> Demo day is always the funnest day of the project. What you wanna do, obviously, is get all the loose shelving or anything else, we pulled that off first. Then we started working on getting the baseboards, all the wainscoting off, off of the existing drywall. There's wainscoting all around this entire bathroom. And of course, no, none of the drywall joints were taped or textured or anything underneath that so we're going to have to do that when we go back. Off all the towel bars, take the shower rod down, existing medicine cabinet out because we're going to save it. We get to work on that wainscoting again. Now we start working on the tile. Start busting the tile off the frace. Start taking the drywall off of the shower. And the drywall off of the shower wall. clean up all the edges. Never seen so many nails in this house. We'll score the edges of the drywall next to the ceiling. Makes it easier to pull it loose without tearing the ceiling up. Now we're going to take this little part of the shower out. Now we're going to break all the tile out in the shower out in sheets. Instead of trying to bust the tile off the drywall, just go ahead and cut the wall and pull the entire drywall and tile out in one piece. It makes it much easier. We'll put new drywall up. Now we're going to scrape up the floor. I'm using a rotary hammer here. You want to be very, very careful when you're using this on the floor not to damage the concrete underneath the tile. And just work it all out. Now I'm sanding the excess mastic off the floor of the shower. Now we'll disconnect the plumbing from the cabinet. And we were going to take this cabinet out in one piece, but there's so many nails in it that after we removed the countertop, we ended up having to bust the whole cabinet apart to get it out. Place all those outlets as well. And here is the bathroom, completely gutted, ready for us to put drywall in. 
texture, paint, new fixtures. And of course, drywall and tile in the shower to rebuild the shower, add a shower seat. Clean slate. So we get the drywall installed on the ceiling so that we can put in the small little light fixture that we moved the wire for. As far as the shower pan, I use wet concrete patch down at the bottom to patch all the low spots in the concrete pan and also to kind of level some of the spots out that we needed to where there were some cracks. Now you want to make sure you keep the pitch in the pan, the existing pan, but this helps a lot and because this is a wet patch and it'll keep it waterproof underneath our tile. So we installed the 2x4 walls for the new seat area. Put the seat bracing on the bottom and notice we're underneath where we're framing right now we're going to have a storage area for uh, cleaning supplies and those kind of things. Now we're installing a hardy backer in the base of the shower on the seat and then in the bottom of the surround. The hardy backer gives us a good concrete joint and gives us something for the tile to bond to that's waterproof that's not going to wash away like drywall would if we took it all the way down. We put our first sheet of green board in for the back, line it up, screw it in. And then we cut the holes in the green board that's going to go back where the shower is. We line it up, we get it screwed in so that we have access to our shower head and our shower control valve. Now we only have two more pieces of green board to get into the rest of the shower. As you can see there on the left, we have a hole that we're going to cut out on the next piece that we put up. so that we can open it up for the soap tray that we're gonna have built into the tile. Now I just use a keyhole saw from the back side to go through here to cut that hole. And then once it's cut, we'll pop it out. And then finish up with the last two pieces of small little drywall inside the shower on the face of the shower. Day three begins with putting drywall on the outside of the shower of the new walls that we built. Once we get the hole cut for the switches, we'll get that piece installed. Then we'll put the piece over the corner that goes around. Now the cutting the drywall is very simple, it goes pretty quick. We'll get the frame, the frame covered on the front, the little edge on the side, and now all the shower is completely dried in. There was a hole behind the toilet where the wainscoting was that we took off, so we're going to also replace that with a sheet of drywall. Now what I'm doing is I'm cutting out where the medicine cabinet used to hang, and we're going to cut out the hole so we can recess the medicine cabinet in the wall. Once we get the coal cut out, we're going to have to cut out these two 2x4s two that run through behind. The nice thing about it is it was a double wall, so there's actually still 2x4s in the wall. You don't find that very often, otherwise we would have had to put a header in. Here's the new light fixture we installed, and we took the two lights on either side out. Now to patch those, put a brace in, and then take a piece of drywall and put it in the hole. And then we'll patch it with mud on both sides. And then now comes the time to tape and texture all the joints that were not taped before underneath the wainscoting. Now I'm not a drywall expert, but I've done a lot of it, so you apply mud to all the joints, lay your tape down, and then float a larger amount of mud over the top of that, and please let it dry before you do it too thick. We'll get uh, tape in the corner, and once we have all the joints taped, we'll let that dry, and then we'll be ready to texture and paint tomorrow. 
I did. So now comes tile. We're installing the 12 by 24 inch tile in the shower all the way up on all three walls. I'm using 1 8 inch spacers for the grout joint and of course we'll get these laid up there. They're actually pretty heavy tiles so you want to make sure you get them back buttered really really well with the, with the mud. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing them into place. You want to make sure you pound on each one of them and put some pressure to make sure that you get a nice adhesion to your drywall. And then I push it up to allow for the spacer. It's a beautiful tile. We found it Lowe's and the link is in the description. So we'll finish getting the rest of the tile up in the shower and then we'll work our way around to the other four walls. Now this is a wall that's always really, really tricky because you have your shower valve and your shower head. The nice thing is the shower valve and the shower head are located in the same spot. So what we do is we split the grout joint down the middle where we take the least amount of tile out of two tiles for the holes for the shower head and for the control valve. Now it's best to measure everything first before you do your cuts. And don't just cut a whole bunch of tile at the same time, assuming that all the walls are square because walls are never square. Even if you put new, new walls in, all it takes is an eighth of an inch of something to be out and they'll have to be running back and forth to your tile saw to cut. Now it comes time for texture. I'm using a sponge technique where I apply a small amount of drywall mud sponged all over and then once we get it sponged onto the wall I'll take my large knife and I'll knock down the texture just really really lightly to feather it and it provides a really nice brocade on the wall. It covers a multitude of sin as well with your drywall but it's a really really basic texture. Now you can use spray texture if you want here. Uh, this is uh, obviously much more affordable. It just takes a little more time to apply it to the walls. As you can see, a close up over here of the door, you just touch it in and then come back knock it down. Now we're laying the floor tile in the shower finishing it up. We're using this this nice uh, two foot two inch by two inch tile. It comes in sheets. And now my wife and my aunt are painting the bathroom. She's doing the ceiling. My wife is painting uh, all the walls and the trim. We have a gray on the walls and a white on the ceiling. And as you can see it really really looks nice in here now. It's starting to come together. Now it's time for grout. So I'm applying the grout to all the joints in the shower. We'll work around with a trowel or my grout, my grout trowel. After we get it all into all the joints, we'll take a wet sponge over the top to smooth it all out. And then we let it all dry and come back with a dry towel to brush off all the excess. Now we're hanging the cabinet over the toilet. We're reusing the existing cabinet that we had before, but I'm building new doors and a face frame to go on the bottom. We put the medicine cabinet back into the open hole, then we screw it down into the boards and the framing that surround it.
and now we have it where we want it. I set the wax ring for the toilet. We put the new toilet in, push it down, make sure it gets a good seal. Get the screws in the base. And once the toilet's installed, we'll put the toilet seat on and get that taken care of. Turn the water on and test it and make sure that it flushes. We bring in the vanity cabinet that I built, set it in place, apply screws to the studs on the wall. I'm applying liquid nails to the top so that we can put the granite countertop on that I already mounted the faucet on. Once I hook up the plumbing, we'll be good to go. So here's the cabinet over the toilet with the new doors and the face frame that I installed on the bottom. And there's our new cabinet and countertop. And now we'll check to see if we actually have water coming out of my plumbing. And looky there, we got cold and hot, both working just fine. The plumbing was a little trickier than it shows in the video, but it always is. So now I'm gonna put some tile backsplash above vanity just underneath the medicine cabinet to give a nice nice trim and then we'll caulk around the edges of that once it's dry. Put the shower fixtures back in, do a little bit of cleanup, hang the shower head back on and then now it comes time to put towel bars in. And we are done with the $2,000 bathroom makeover for my uncle and aunt's house. So I want to take you through and kind of show you exactly what we've done in here. And you've seen the before pictures and I'll have some dispersed in here as well, but let's walk in. So come on. So the first thing we did, as you can see here, is we took out the old vanity cabinet. And we put in this new vanity cabinet that I built. And you can see the video for the vanity cabinet that I built by clicking right up here. So as we walk in here, take a look. We'll put the medicine cabinet back up. We recessed the medicine cabinet into the ceiling. And you see me right there. We've got this nice new light bar fixture, brush nickel, with our LED fixtures in top, in top of it. Down here at the bottom, we've got tile backsplash over the cabinet with a really nice jacuzzi fixture. New outlets, new paint, new towel bars everywhere in here. So as we walk over here, we've replaced the toilet with a brand new Aquasource toilet. We took the existing over the toilet cabinet. I made new doors for it to match the doors that I've got on the vanity cabinet, the shaker style door, and I built a face frame around there to hold a nice little storage box. And then of course the fun part here in the bathroom was the shower. So as you can see before we had just a simple shower stall that basically came down from the ceiling and what we did is we took it all the way to the ceiling, opened it up, made it wider. We used these 12 by 24 inch tile, it's a beautiful tile from Lowe's. Now there's a seat down in the bottom of the shower. We have a storage cubby for shampoos and other things. Obviously we're gonna put sealant, grout sealant on all this once the grout's completely dry. We're still waiting for the grout to dry. And then down in the bottom of the shower, we have a really beautiful stone tile. Stone marbleized tile. And as we walk around the side here, one thing that's really, really cool, we didn't want to waste any space over here. So down at the bottom of this angle on the other side, we built the storage cubby. And the storage cubby is where my aunt's going to store all of her cleaning supplies. And it goes all the way, all the way back to the edge, back under the seat of the shower. That way it opens up the cabinets so she's got plenty of storage.
So there you have it. We've got the $2,000 bathroom remodel all done and all taken care of. We did a lot of it ourselves, which saved a ton of money, but you can do the same as well. So all the products that we use in this video are going to be linked in the description of the video, so please go check those out. And if you have any questions or if there's anything in here that you'd like to try in your place, please let me know. I'd be glad to answer any questions or comments you have. Please like, share, and subscribe. We love it when you come to our channel. Come to see what we're doing. And stick around because we've got a lot more fun things coming.